Today I'm gonna bring you my Barbarian Whirlwind build finally to Diablo 4. I just did Hoda and now we're testing out Whirlwind. I know Whirlwind has been absolutely everywhere. It is probably the best build for the Barbarian in the game. But I finally wanted to bring my version of the build or what I think or what I most enjoy for the build to Diablo 4. So we're gonna go over everything that you need for the build, skills, gear, abilities, a paragon, all that stuff and how to play it this build is very very good it's very very fast at speed clearing as well as doing single target damage we are confidently and comfortably clearing tier 40 nightmare dungeons or higher as you guys had already seen in the gameplay so let's start off by going over the skills for the build these skills i actually really really like i know there's a lot of variations out there guys but i really do enjoy this build because i am a huge fan of wrath of the berserker when it comes to whirlwind okay it's just an additive ability so i don't really want to swap it out for anything else however let's go into this i'll talk about a few other changes that we will have and possibly that you could test which i think is still still very very good i just prefer wrath of the berserker so we're starting off with lunging strike we're just doing two points into lunging strike just for the extra heal chance and increased damage which is really cool then we come down to our core skills to grab the bread and butter of our entire build which is whirlwind we're going to whirlwind up into furious whirlwind which is going to apply 40 percent of its base damage is bleeding over five seconds this is what is going to allow us to deal massive amounts of damage to large groups of enemies however i can say that if you really don't want to do the bleeding you could definitely just do violent whirlwind and after it is 30 percent increased damage until stacking both of these are really really good i think overall into higher pushing the bleeding is just better then we're taking three points into pressure point for unlucky hit our core skills which is our whirlwind have a chance to make enemies vulnerable however this is going to be additive to our exploit glyph that we're doing in our paragon board because the exploit glyph makes enemies vulnerable for three seconds so this just helps us keep enemies vulnerable for even longer then we're going to come down to our defensive skills and yes 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 we are running all three shouts okay we're putting two points into rally and cry all the way into tactical rally and cry this is going to help us give another unstoppable as well as some resource regeneration and fury generation um, we're going to come back to Rally and Cry when we talk about not running a Lunging Strike as a basic, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Then we have Challenging Shout. I have maxed this one completely into Enhanced, which is going to give us more uh, life, as well as give us 3 Fury every single time we take damage. This is what's also going to help us keep our resource regeneration up to Whirlwind. Okay, down here to our Brawling skills, we're going to be taking... Uh, war cry into power war cry which is when we have six enemies or more nearby we get to do 10 percent additional damage if you didn't want to do power war cry that's okay you could do mighty war cry if you have some issues surviving both of these are really really good it doesn't really matter which one you do however the extra damage is very good then we're doing three points in a booming voice for all three of our shots will last longer three points into guttural yell which is going to uh, have enemies deal less damage one point into raid healer just for some sustain on life Three points into Swiftness because we want to be as fast as possible. And then one point into Aggressive Resistance for Damage Reduction, reduction While Berserking, which we will obtain from Wrath of the Berserker. And then Prolific Fury While Berserking, our resource gen is increased by 80% to help us continue to Whirlwind. Then we're going to come down to Weapon Mastery. We're going to do three points into Pit Fighter, which is pretty much a solid staple for Barbarian for more damage. And then one point into Hamstring just to add some bleeding effects to our damage and make them slow. Next, we're taking Thick Skin for a little bit of added fortification every time we take damage. And then Counter Offensive is while we're fortified over 50% um, of our max life, we deal 12% increased damage. This should most likely be up 80% of the time. Then we come down to our ultimate skills, guys. We're taking three points into Heavy Handed. We're always using two-handed heavy weapons, and this gives us increased critical strike damage. We're taking one point into Tempered Fury for maximum fury, and then three points into Invigorating Fury. So we heal for each 100 fury that we spend. Now, we have Wrath of the Berserker, which gives us um, some added... I actually did not forget to do Supreme Wrath of the Berserker here, so I actually have to add a point uh, somewhere. So we're going to have to take the one point out of our shout, I think. Uh, or we could actually just do 8% less there. I think that's just fine. We'll keep the two points. You know what? We'll leave the one point there, and we'll come down and take the three points into Wrath of the Berserker. I didn't even realize I didn't have that. 
Uh, this is going to give us every 50 Fury we spend, increase Berserk's damage bonus, and then give us a, a movement speed and Fury generation as well as Unstoppable and Berserking. Our key passive here, we're taking Unbridled Rage. Core skills are going to cost... Um, deal more damage, but it's going to cost 100% more fury. So this is additive to this right here, right? So we heal for 9% of our max life for each 100 fury that we spend. This costs us 35 fury per second to channel. So three channels, we're already to it. 30, 60, 90, we're already to it. Three of them. Okay, so those are the skills, guys. Definitely messing around with those. I really enjoy the build. So let's go into our skills. You notice that I still don't have some of these upgraded. I'm just lackluster on um, resources at the moment. I don't have a whole lot of... Whoops, I'm going back in. I don't have a whole lot of materials to actually upgrade these, especially silver or I'm completely out. But let's go over the powers. So, uh, Grasping Whirlwind. While we're in, we're, while whirlwinding periodically, and we pull enemies towards us, which is really good. Each point of fury generated while at maximum gives us fortify. Uh, in our gloves, these are the only unique gloves that you need for the build. Is Gore's devastating grips. L uh, whirlwind explodes for uh, damage of the total base damage of surrounding enemies as fire when you stop. You do not need these for whirlwind, but if you do find them, they are very important for the build. Disobedience for more armor, of course. Boots, we're doing unstoppable. While we're unstoppable, we'll get increased move speed to be super, super fast. Then we're going to be taking uh, Potent Hammer of the Whirlwind, Dire Whirlwind. Critical hit strike chances increase for each second is channeled. Then we have whenever you deal Berserking damage, uh, inflict 24% of it as bleeding over 5 seconds. Deal increased damage while we have a barrier. And then each point of fury generated while at maximum fury grants your next core skill increased damage up to 60%. Very, very important here with Limitless Rage. Then, of course, we have Edge Masters for more damage. We have Bolden's Chief Band for a shout cooldown. And then we also have Fury of Echoing or Circle of Echoing Fury for shout uh, fury generation while they're active. Okay. So those are our gear pieces. A few of these are actually really interchangeable. But overall, I find this flows really, really good. If you didn't want to rock disobedience, what you could do is Temetry. This will help add some really good barrier damage here if you really want to rock that. Or what you could do to guys in your bear in your um, thing is drop a lunging strike and then come in and do iron skin, which will give you a barrier, which is very, very important. Into our Paragon. So the Paragon board, we're only up to level 80, but we do have four boards and four glyphs. However, two of my glyphs are low level, but the build still functions really, really strong. Okay, this build is going to be not about only about sustaining our fury, but doing some increased damage and doing some shout cooldown. Okay, so we're going to go in, we're going to come up, and we're going to take Brawn for more physical damage and max life. Because remember, a lot of our damage is based on having super high life. Then we're going to come in and take Exploit, or excuse me, Territorial, for damage to close enemies and damage reduction from close enemies. We're taking Iron Strength for more armor and strength. However, this isn't required, but the armor bonus is actually quite significant. Then we're taking Raw Power for more damage with all the nodes uh, adjacent to it. Then we're going to come in and grab the Warbringer, uh, board which is going to be pretty good we spend 75 fury we get fortify this, again this is really easy we whirlwind channel it three times and then this is already triggered okay over here we're taking hungering fury for maximum fury and more importantly two fury on kill with all of its adjacent ones for more fury on max fury and fury on kill which is great then we're going to be taking uh, raw power for more physical damage and strength our glyph here, of course, is exploit. We make enemies vulnerable, and we do increased damage to uh, vulnerable enemies. Then we're going to come over, and we're going to take the decimator board. We're not actually taking decimator, but we need it. So that way we can come grab demolish for more vulnerable damage and strength, as well as arrogance for damage reduction and strength. And then our glyph is going to be disembowel. So we get physical damage over time, which would be our bleeding, but killing a bleeding enemy, which every enemy will be bleeding, has a chance to reduce our non-active cooldown or non-ultimate active cooldowns, which is our all of our shouts. Very, very important. Come up and grab our pillage for more vulnerable damage and armor, as well as the extra nodes there. Then we're going to come up and we're going to grab Flawless Technique. We're not actually taking this one again. We just need it for the board because the board is actually pretty stellar. We're going to come up and grab all of our magic nodes for crit strike damage and physical damage, as well as Havoc for more crit strike and physical damage. And then lastly, at level 80, we're grabbing Imbiter. Okay, this is extra damage while healthy, which we should be pretty healthy all the time. 
Uh, and then it gives us a potion increase, but the damage while healthy is really, really strong. However, this one is something you could definitely swap out. Like, I really want to swap it out for Marshall. I really want to swap this for Marshall instead because we gain 25% um, bonus to all magic nodes, which would be these, right? Which these ones aren't necessarily good, but I do want it. But this one, more importantly, is going to give us the extra damage. Or excuse me, this is ambidextrous. I'm sorry, guys. Marshall. We want Marshall for the increased bonus damage, but after casting a shout skill, the active cooldown of every other shout skill is reduced. I really, really like this. It would boost these ones. The damage reduction here is actually pretty solid to be boosted, but the um, shout cooldown is very, very important. However, Crusher is, is solid here, but we're not using maces, but if you wanted to use a mace, you could definitely put this in here as well. We're not necess necessarily doing overpower damage, but the extra damage with maces would be pretty stellar here like if we swap these out and did strength instead which would be pretty darn good it would make this build a significantly like better come in what do we need 10 more which we don't have but when we do that we get the extra overpower damage so that is the build guys we're gonna go in i'm gonna showcase some of this real quick on some more gameplay i have been doing you know greater or excuse me greater rifts i've been doing um Nightmare Dungeons, 40 and above, no problem. There's some cases where it takes a little bit to kill some people, but uh, otherwise it's okay. I do want to mention that when you come in here into your Whirlwind, if you check the auto select, it's going to do the most damage here. We're going to keep maces up, okay? We're going to keep maces up just because it does more damage. However, I really want swords after I get that leveled up. So let's just showcase the build just a little bit. Build is very, very good. We just don't want to die here because of the Pikachu. But again, we comfortably just slap level, you know, what is this? 94 monsters at level 80, no problem. It's not even an issue for us. However, the poison damage is a real problem on blind burrows for barbarians. Otherwise, Whirlwind, guys, is pretty straightforward. Showcase just a little bit more. Pop all of our shouts, pretty self-explanatory. And then we just Whirlwind in, no problem make everything vulnerable i mean you guys know how whirlwind works it's pretty easy the build just absolutely slaps and you demolish absolutely everything on the board again i've been able to comfortably like do the level 40 solo no problem we berserk super strong everything is just dying it's super good pop all our shouts and then we're good to go. Make sure stuff doesn't explode on us because that sucks. And again, you could be doing the bleeding. All of this stuff is really just up to you when it comes to how you want to play Whirlwind. But it is insanely strong. So guys, that's the Whirlwind build. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Make sure to like the video if you guys have enjoyed. Uh, subscribe if you guys are new. And as always, stay gaming. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.